Christians, they pray. Everybody prays one way or the other. But the challenge has always been how do we receive answers to our prayers. Father, this morning we received insight into your word. We had that the light of your word will flood our hearts. And everyone that has come for this service and those watching my way of internet, we ask that understanding will flood their hearts. Thank you for teaching us today. In Jesus' name we pray. I'll begin from our popular scripture, James chapter 1 verse 5. And that will help us a lot when it comes to how to receive answers to our prayers. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all. Take note. God gives to how many? Whether you are an unbeliever, does God answer the prayer of one believer? Yes. Against what people are teaching, that God does not listen to an unbeliever. It's not true. Because James said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all. And how does he do it? Liberally and upbraided not and it shall be given. So when it comes to God, he is so certain that when you ask of God, he gives. I'll give you a few examples to what I just said. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 43, does God attend to everyone? Let's find out. He said, you have heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. It means the law of Moses taught them that. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Why? That ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise and on the he sendeth rain on and who again? There should be more that is God. He answers the prayers of the just and the prayer of the unjust. He said, God, Pastor, God will be partial. I want you to understand who you are cannot change the nature of God. God's nature is that He giveth. Everybody say, God's nature is that He gives to all. And how does He do it? He does it liberally and He does not do it with, oh, I want to be selective. Oh, favoritism. That is not with our God. Mark chapter 5. I need to explain further because I don't just want us to stop there. Mark and chapter 5. Very quickly. Mark chapter 5. I don't know exactly where to start from. But I guess we can just start from over the, top to make sure the case of the woman that had the, the issue of blood. Mark Let's chapter 5. Alright. I'll yeah, start he from verse. That he is a severe so let's set the stage more. Let's give him more pizza. Verse 21. Verse 21. Please follow me. 21. Let's do something. And when Jesus was passed over again by sheep unto the other side, most people gathered unto him and he was not nine unto where the sea verse 22 very quick and uh, quickly now and behold there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue Jairus by name and when he saw him he fell at his feet and besought him greatly saying my little daughter lieth at the point of death I pray thee come and lay thy hands on him on her that she may be healed and she shall live and Jesus was Jairus born again. Let me quickly say all that Jesus ministered to none were saved. All the miracles of Jesus in the four gospel, none of them had received salvation. Salvation would be gotten upon death, burial, and resurrection. So Jairus came met Jesus, and upon meeting Jesus, guess what? He said, please follow me home. Lay your hands on my daughter, and my daughter will be healed, and my daughter will live. But look at the answer. Jesus followed. Now it means that we can pray and the way we pray will get the same answer. As soon as Jesus said that, the Bible said the man followed. Now we make some progress. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. 
Come on, read with me. Next verse. Next verse. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather did what? Do what? When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. 28. For she said, Who said? She said. Who said? She said. Who said? She said. It is what she said. For she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I will be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dry. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Now, how did this miracle happen? She said. Why would she say? Because he, she heard of Jesus. What did she hear of Jesus? She heard how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. And doing good, he was not selective. So she heard of this Jesus that does good to everyone that comes around. Now because Jesus is the embassy of God, Jesus is the sole revelator of God, Jesus is the definition of God. God is good not to some. God is good to all. So this woman saw that this Jesus irrespective of your condition he will not ask you to fast seven days before he prays for you. He will not ask you to go and get some items to do some work for you before you get healed. He will not ask you questions before he heals you. And so this woman came in the press behind and she said in her heart, if I may but touch and exactly what she said was what happened it means i determine the receipt of my answers it's not in god's hand god generally does good it's up to me how i come to take this woman said if i may but touch she said that to herself and what she said to herself she did and what she said and did was what happened to her she was healed but mind you jesus was on his way to Jairus' house this is the point irrespective of your faith jesus wants to meet you there one said come to my house the other one said if i may but touch anyhow you want it god wants to answer that prayer look at your neighbor say god wants to answer that prayer god wants to put smiles in your, in your on your face he wants to put laughter in your mouth however god wants to put smile and laughter on you so this woman said if i may but touch jairus question was this woman born again come on don't be afraid was this woman born again so because you know sometimes we just stay like this it's my sin that made god not to answer now if your sin made god not to answer then god is not true to his nature his nature is that he gives to all now he has considered that your mistakes will be there but your mistake will not change who he is can i say that again he has considered that you will make mistakes the psalmist said he knows me he knows my frailty he knows my weaknesses but he said you see we all put together this is who i am god gives liberally god gives liberally and upbraided not he does not rebuke he does not rebuke so when it comes to receiving in the place of prayer i must zero in my mind i'm dealing with a father who gives liberally who does not consider my shortcoming and what his nature is about is that he wants to see everyone receive answer to that prayer am i communicating so back to james 1 5 where we read so you have to understand how you receive answers to your prayer say with me he gives liberal the nlt rendering helps us in breaking that word down so i'll do nlt i'll do amplify and i will continue you see i'm just in verse five and i've not made progress down to verse eight but i just want you to see if you need wisdom ask our generous god look at the word used again he's generous when you say one is generous it means he doesn't look at faces to determine what he does this kind of emotion oh, am I communicating? He does not look at faces. He does not say, okay, you are fine. I give to you. You are not fine. I will not give to you. Once God, the Bible describes him as generous God, it means that anyone that comes to him and asks, he will give. And he will give it to you 
He will not rebuke you. That's to tell you that the first statement made that God gives to all, he went further by saying he will give it because that's his nature. So raise your right and say God gives because that's his nature. Who I am cannot change his nature. What I do cannot change his nature. He is God. He is a giver and he gives. My faith should be in the fact that he is God. He is a giver and he gives generously. Who is the first to say amen church? That's where God wants your faith to be. You know, people tell you it's because there is a central cause in your family. You still don't understand who your father is. Because if a central cause can stop God from giving, it means man can do a thing that will alter the nature of God. There is nothing you and I can do to alter who God is. Can I say that again? There is nothing you and I can do that will alter who God is. His nature is that he's a giving nature. Read with me the Amplified rendering. If any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God. Take note of the word. He's a giving God. He does it consistently. He's not in the past tense. He's his nature. He's God, a giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding. And it will be given. So your father does not look for fault to determine when to give, does not rebuke, does not look for reproach. He sees you the way you should see him. He sees you as you are my beloved and then you must see him as your so beloved father. Because in this nature, action. This principle now I'm going to ask you a question this morning because we just said something here that verse 6 is going to shake your foundation. To to so verse 6, King James. Verse 6, King James. The primary Look action is the legs. But let him ask. Is everything else. The arms in faith. So that is the problem. So Pastor, what faith are we talking about? The secondary action of the other say, but let him ask him faith. If it's not wavering. So where will wavering happen? In the mind. In your thinking. So the faith talked about here is not have faith in God. No. The faith that he's a giving God. The faith that he gives liberally. He shouldn't be, should I say yes or should I say no? Will it happen or will it not happen? So the faith will be, he's a giving God, he does not rebuke. And we are you see, a when you have when all of this here, at the back the of your mind, all your prayer receives answer. Don't let it go unnoticed. Can I say People that again? Not even notice all, that all your prayer receives answer. Time. This is the why challenge has always been a sister went through the same condition so going through. Bite and I believe that sister was more prayerful than I am. That sister was so committed in church. You see, it's not your commitment in church, it's not your devotion, it's your understanding of who your father is. Can I say that again? Somebody can be committed and devoted, but yet has low understanding of who his father is. Look at how the Bible puts it. That let him ask in faith. No way. So the wavering is it with God or with the man? It's with the man. It means he waver as to the nature of God. The wavering is in the mind of the man as to the nature of God. For he that wavereth, did he say God that wavereth or he that wavereth? So the challenge is with the one asking. How are you asking? How are you asking to say this one is too big for God? No in between. This other one is small. Let me ask for the small one because God can attend to this. This other one, God cannot. When you have that mindset, the Bible says he that wavered is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and what? Toss. Please look up. Look up. I'm doing so. And I want you to understand me. Over here. I may not be jumping everywhere, but I want you to understand so. Where does the wavering happen? In the mind. Say that with me. Where does the wavering happen? Say like a minute. Where does the wavering happen? And most times it's a function of what we have been taught. Sometimes we've been taught wrongly, so we believe sometimes God answers, other times God does not answer. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 explains this particular verse. Ephesians 4, verse 14 explains this particular verse. So we look at it. He said that we henceforth be no more children, how? Toss, tow, and fro, and carry the bag with every wind. So the toxin and the throwing 
because if you please, is a result of the wrong doctrine. The, the doctrine that sometimes God answers, other times God says wait, other times God says I won't give to you, other times God says the sin in your life is too much, other times God says your family background is bad, other times God will say you offended your husband, other times God will say you offended your wife. Is a it's a form of doctrine that you have imbibed. He said that we henceforth be no more children tossed and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine so by the slates of words and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So it means that the kind of teaching, the kind of study, the kind of learning you have of God will determine your wavering or not wavering. Can I say that again? When you are taught that sometimes God does not answer you, you come with that mind to ask of the giving God, you will be in, in jeopardy. Verse 7. Now. Can we make some progress? Let me say, I have a God who is consistent. I'm a son of God. I am consistent. I don't waver because my father does not waver. My faith is in him because his nature is that of good. Who is the first to say amen? That's his nature. For let not that my word now when we compare because the, the doctrine is in the mind. Looks less powerful. Think Even though earlier we that he shall receive anything. So when a man is already wavering, he does go and throw. That like man cannot receive. Now, why is it that that man cannot receive? Is it because God is not giving? And only okay, everybody listen to me now. So in order to be right in this hall, do you know we have FM wave in this hall? It's hard to tell how much room you know what they call FM wave? Frequency modulation. What you have in your radio. The question is, how come you are not getting 94.19 right where you are here? Because you have not tuned to it. The same is true of God. God gives generously, but people have not been able to tune to that channel. With volume, weight, Can I say that again? Did I say that again? Like God gives generously, generously but people are not tuning to that frequency. Do we have, have for example, when drawing SM a line on a or XW here? Short wave. Do we have short wave, we have short wave here? We have short wave. But until you turn to it, although it's there, you may not be able to access it. That is what I'm trying to explain. That God gives consistently, He gives liberally, He does not find fault. So the fault is in the way we think about our God. The, 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 the shortcoming we have had is the kind of learning we have had. The learning that God sometimes gives, God sometimes does not give. But so I want you to understand, it shall be given. Everybody say, it shall be given. That's the nature of our father. For let no man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Verse 8. just adding a single line here and there. Verse 8. Where surfaces come out and where Verse 8. Another thing to know when doing lines is to avoid symmetry. A double-minded God. I didn't hear you. A double-minded God. Is the challenge with God or with man? A double-minded man. He unstable. In all this. For example, Philip, did you see that? You become unstable when you are double mind about who God is. This is a known affliction that animators have to make a conscious effort to avoid. God is not willing. God will not. He answers hits, people like Pastor Ehis. Pastor Ehis can quote a lot of a lot of scripture that God will stand up on his chair. So wow, my son, you have learned so much. Prayer is not about how many scriptures you quote. Prayer has to do with your understanding of who your father is. Tap your neighbor. Say, wake up. It's not about the number of scripture you quote. It's about your understanding of your father. Can I shock you? The devil does quoting a lot. It's the devil that quotes. It is written if you jump down, it gives us a different standard for what Jesus will explain to him. Explain to him, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. It's not about how much of scripture we use, it's how much of the understanding of God we have, where you come to the Father and pray exactly how you feel. Somebody say amen. James chapter 5, verse 16, we'll read the amplified rendering. James talked about prayer here, and I want you to see it. He talked about prayer. And that's the only reference they made of Elijah in the whole of the epistle. In the fourth gospel, he mentioned Elijah, wanted to repeat the feet of Elijah. Everybody looked up. 
Third, confess to one another. Can overcomplicate Therefore, character your fault, your, your sleep, your false step, your offenses, your sin. And, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind so let's give some characters and heart. This is the part I want you to see. The earnest, heartfelt, now his appeal comes from continued prayer. Say with me, heartfelt, has too many details continued. To see Did you see? There's no quotation there. Heartfelt. The you know the way you talk to your father. Heartfelt. You may not need to add this some spices to your prayer. Let's which a lot of people are doing today. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah make a dish case. Jehovah do over do. Jehovah go back and forth. Jehovah over be. You don't need those things. It's not heartfelt prayer. All of that you are doing is to correct your own behavior. You are trying to make Magnify God in your mind. The lion of the tribe so, of Rumebricon. You don't need all those things. Why not just come with a heartfelt? And that's what James talked about. He simply said, The heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous. Did we do? Did we teach on right, who a righteous man is this morning? So you now understand. Of a believer, what happened? Make a tremendous power. So how do I make tremendous power available? It's a heartfelt prayer. Everybody say heartfelt prayer. Now it's not a prayer. Hey, Father, Father. No, you have not prayed though. Father, Jehovah, Jehovah move mountain. Jehovah move, uh, move valley. You have not said anything. Just come the way you are. Lord, can you imagine Pastor Barry's son walks to him and the first thing he says, Oh, daddy, daddy, daddy. The Ogugu one of Ogubolo, the Mene, Mene, Sabi do something well of Ogoniland. The Eze, a paraway of Equerenland. He said, excuse me, what is the matter? Two of us. And do you know that's what we do? We think by saying those big things, God becomes bigger. Help me tap your neighbor. No matter what you say, it does not increase God's size. It will not increase the size now. You know, we think when we say the higher than the highest, the shorter than the shortest. Go, uh, you have not asked anything. That's not a heartfelt prayer. Tap your neighbor, say that's not a heartfelt prayer. Then we are not being sincere because the problem we are having is with our mind. We are trying to deal with issues of unbelief, and that's why we are speaking those grammar. We are dealing with issues of unbelief. They are not necessary. Jehovah, over, overdo, El Shaddai. You see, this is where we miss it, sir. Everybody look up. Have you met people before? Say, I need a job. Give me scripture. God is not the formula for job. I need a husband. Give me scripture for or getting husband. God is not a formula for getting husband. He said, you don't understand. Pastor, I want to buy a house now. Give me scripture for a house. God does not want you to use him to buy. You know what God says? He said to Abraham, I am your shield. I am your exceeding great reward. When you have me, you have those things. He told them in Mark six, I mean Matthew 6, 33, say, seek me first. Or, so God does not want you to use him to get what you are looking for. He wants you to know him for who he is and that understanding produces all these other things for you. Everybody say this with me. Say, God is a giver. I must come with heartfelt prayer, knowing who God is to have answers. Who is the first to say amen here? You know, I just quoted the scripture and I felt it would be necessary we, re we read that scripture. I think that is in the book of Genesis 15 verse 1. Genesis 15 and verse 1. We'll just read it. Genesis 15 and verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Psh, saying, fear not Abraham. I am your word. Shield. This is where they got the word El Shaddai. I am your El Shaddai. Your abundant compensation. And your reward shall be exceedingly great. He wants to be the I am in your life rather than using him to get things. Oh, come on. Am I communicating? Because people just feel, okay, I need a new job. Give me scripture for job. 
I need a house. Give me scripture for house. I need a wife. Give me children. Uh, give me scripture for that. I need children. Give me scripture. You don't need scripture. You just need God to understand who he is. That is not, I need a scripture to and twist God. No. He said, after these things, the, Lord, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying, fear not, Abraham, I am your shield. I like that amplified rendering I saw. I am your compensation. I am your reward. Instead of looking for compensation, have me, you have your compensation. Instead of looking for reward, have me, you have your reward. Am I communicating? See the amplifier. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am your shield, your abundant compensation. Stop looking for scriptures for abundant compensation. Your father is your abundant compensation. He said, And your reward shall be exceedingly great. So he said, Oh God, Jehovah El Shaddai. It's not just quoting Jehovah El Shaddai. It's knowing who Jehovah El Shaddai is. That he is your abundant compensation. And following through with him, you come with what they call heartfelt prayer. Everybody say heartfelt. Philip, did you hear that? Say heartfelt prayer. So, when we say heartfelt prayer, exactly how you feel. You don't need to add curry. You don't need to put maggie to it. You don't need salt. You don't need spices. Just come. Father, in the name of Jesus. Truly, the money in the account cannot solve the things on ground. Lord, I ask for an opening. I want to be able to meet this need and to meet this need and to meet this need. And Lord, I thank you because your word guarantees me all of this in Jesus' name. Instead of coming to God, Father, I bless thee. You are using King James language to pray in this generation. Look at thou not into the life of your handmaiden, and seest not thou what I go through, O God of my Father. Why not sympathize thou with me? Least I diet. You don't need to do all that. Help me say heartfelt. Don't sound King James. Say it again. Say heartfelt. Don't sound King James. That is not what changes the situation. A lot of people like to sound King James. Oh God of my father. Hey, let, let, let. You don't need that. He's your shield. He's your exceeding great reward. Help me say with me. Say he's my shield. He's my exceeding great reward. For the last time, he is my shield. He is my exceeding great reward. It shall be given. Say like you mean it. Say it shall be given. Hallelujah. So this is how prayers are carried out. And this is how we receive answer to prayer. Coming to find out the nature of our father. He give it. Now he, that was talked about in line with a need. He said, if any of you lack what? Wisdom. Let him ask of the giving God, who giveth liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given. It shall be given. So that is the nature of our Father, and our approach should not be a King James approach. I speak it to thee, O Lord, that thou mightest have mercy on your handmaidens and pourest forth thy blessing and let it come upon me like the rain and that thou Lord mightest be glorified and no that is not heartfelt prayer the way you talk to your parents should be the way you talk to your father am I communicating so all through the programming we shall just speak God's word the way it is and we receive answers in Jesus name I close with our popular scripture. 2 Chronicles chapter 27 and verse 5. I'll close there. 5 and 6. 6 will be my emphasis. He fought also with the king of the Amorites and prevailed against them. And the children of Ammon gave him the same year and hundred talents of silver and ten thousand measures of wheat and ten thousand of barley so much did the children of Ammon pay unto him both the second 
year and a third. Everybody read verse 6. So Jordan became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord is gone. So programming 2022 is all about you and I preparing our way into that year. Somebody say amen to that. That's all we are doing. It's a prayer a period. It's a time to begin to impute and to put things into the year 2022. It's to say words and speak into the year what the year should give to us. Like in the course of prayer this morning, we prayed one simple scripture which is in Genesis chapter 2 verse 19. That the man called Ada named all the animals. So in the same vein, you and I can name the year 2022 and it will serve the same purpose for you and I. Hallelujah. On this note, I want to encourage you. Beginning from tomorrow down to Thursday, 6 a.m. in the morning to 7 a.m., 6 p.m. in the evening to 7 a.m.